Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you the round two game from the Zagreb Cup I played last month. Uh, and in, in this video I'm going to show you the most annoying setup Black could choose against the London system. Which, if you play the London, you have to be aware of it. Uh, and if you are struggling to find something against the London, then this should serve you pretty well. Uh, this setup is very well known, I think, and mo most of my friends who play the London or try to play against the London know this and use it well. I have to say that I played against it twice and I won both games, but uh, I don't think I should have won either of them uh, objectively had my opponents played, uh, played, played better. Okay, so what's the setup? Uh, white, of course, plays d4, and after d5, bishop f4, knight f6, e3, e6. This is all fairly uh, standard stuff. Uh, knight to d2, bishop to d6, very early on, bishop to g3, black plays c5, white plays c3. And now, if black plays knight c6, we have a normal uh, London without knight f3, which leads to very comfortable positions for white. However, uh, black could play queen to c7. And the idea of this move, uh, if you don't know it, is to reinforce e5 and to basically force through e5 uh, and there's nothing white can do about it. It's going to happen regardless of what white does. The only thing you can choose here is whether you want double g pawns or another loss of tempo with the bishop. Uh, let me try and explain that. So, so you play knight to f3, black plays knight b to d7 in this position, not knight to c6. Because if knight to c6, then you can simply win a pawn, uh, because the bishop is pinned to the queen. Uh, so knight b to d7, and once bishop d3 is played, uh, black castles. And now you have to choose. If you take on d6, which is my preferred way of playing this position, it, you did waste two tempi with the bishop, so you played uh, bishop c1 to f4, f4 to g3, and g3 to d6 completely unnecessarily. If you don't take, uh, if you castle, then black takes, you take, and they still push e5, as will happen if you take on d6. But you have doubled g pawns, and let me explain why this is bad. It's bad because the bishop on c8 doesn't really have a good square. Uh, the reason being that there's a pawn on d5. So in most setups, if white can prevent the bishop from coming to g4, white should do it. So h3 is a very common move. Obviously, when you have double g pawns and no h pawn, you cannot play h3. Which is why, in this position, uh, I prefer taking on d6, and most people do. And after takes, queen takes, now you castle, this is all extremely standard, has been played a lot of times, and most people who play this setup and most London players are going to play all of this instantly. I had an hour and 35 minutes on the clock at this, at this point, so I basically wasted less than 30 seconds on 10 moves. We play with the 30 second increment. So e5, you, you have to take, <clears throat> so takes, knight takes again, you have to take, takes, queen takes, you force the queen away, and here the usual moves are, are queen to, to, to e7 or to c7, after which white continues h3. Let me just show you the most common way to play h3, and then b6, and then a4, and, and so on. My opponent played queen to d6, which is uh, slightly imprecise. Uh, the reason is that the, the queen is going to be used as a tempo gain uh, with the rook on d1. So the queen is actually misplaced on d6, even though that's the usual square you retreat the queen to in in most French positions and similar positions when the right uh, comes out to f3 uh, or to c4 in, in some Tarash French positions. But if the queen, for example, retreats to c7, which is a normal square, you have to prevent bishop to g4. Now this bishop is sort of bad. And after b6, why is this annoying for, for the London player? Well, firstly, this is no longer a London system. It's a Karo Khan uh, with colors reversed, and it's actually a very standard position. Uh, White did manage to get rid of his bad uh, c1 bishop, or in the case of the Karo Khan, c8 bishop, and White has no problems. The issue is that this is a perfectly equal position in which White has absolutely no advantage. 
black doesn't have any advantage either and black has to play more actively to prove that this center is not a weakness but white has no easy way forward except to try and break this so a4 and and these ideas are, are very common for example if f if if a5 you can play b4 immediately and of course if uh, c4 is ever played you give up the d4 square and if this is taken twice you can continue with something like queen b1 rook c1 and try to target these weaknesses eventually you are going to get your pawn back this is the way i play these positions but it's extremely annoying so if you're looking for something against the london this should be it let me show you how the game went so at this point obviously i'm extremely annoyed because I, I i'm playing a game against an unrated opponent a game i should win unless my opponent is a genius who, who never played tournament chess and is really good uh, and i have an equal position so i'm i'm going to have to come up with something so he plays queen d6 which is not a huge blunder but it's imprecise pawn h3 h6 uh, I, uh, h6 has no purpose in my opinion i never really want to play knight to g5 there sometimes there are uh, bishop h7 ideas but usually people play g6 in these positions because i don't really have an attack on the dark squares so g6 cannot be considered a weakness uh, h6 makes no sense uh, in it, in fact it gives up some of the control uh, of the king side in the event of knight f5 at some point and especially since this bishop is going to have to end up on this diagonal uh, there could be knight h4 ideas where of course g6 would be begging for a sacrifice and if not g6 then the knight comes to f5 and defended by the bishop this bishop let's say is on b7 this could become a very strong attack similar to what happens in italian and spanish positions so h6 is a mistake. Uh, here I could have played c4 straight away. Uh, of course, if, if that's taken, you lose the queen uh, to bishop h7. Uh, if you play dc4, uh, if you play, excuse me, d4, then I can just take it. And after c takes, I can play queen d2. The idea being rook fd1 and, and just winning a pawn. So black cannot react. And if black doesn't react, here's the issue and here's why i didn't play c4 uh if i ever take this let's say black does nothing and i take for some reason then black has a three to two pawn majority uh, and should have a more pleasant end game in my opinion so i never really want to take so therefore i didn't play c4 i played queen c2 queen c2 is a normal move exploiting the fact that the queen is on d6 uh starting to put pressure on these on these two weaknesses and again my opponent is going to either have to play b6 or bishop d7 bishop c6 so i have some time he played bishop d7 i played rook a to d1 and that should be a mistake i think rook f d1 is more precise uh, i wanted my rooks on the d and e file but then i changed plans and my rook actually made no sense here uh it it would have been much better to have it on a1 so he now admits his mistake and plays queen c7 obviously this is simply a loss of tempo <clears throat> okay uh i played bishop to e2 uh, i could have played rook d2 straight away uh but i was preparing for a tactical trick um uh, and i thought my bishop is much better on e2 in the event of his next move which he did play which is bishop to c6 uh, i wanted to have my bishop on e2 i mean i don't see a normal continuation for black unless black plays bishop to c6 no other move makes sense so he did play it and the reason why i played bishop e2 is i want to play b4 and i did play b4 and in many positions i want to be putting pressure on the d5 pawn I want to be defending my knight on f3 to make sure I don't get double pawns. And I also want to be defending the rook on d1. So after b4, my position is much sounder with the bishop on, on e2 instead of on d3. Obviously, if this is taken, I just go cb4, uh, threatening b5. And this is a weakness. This square is tremendously weak. Uh, white isn't winning, but white should be able to slowly improve his position and create weaknesses uh, un until black crumbles uh, after b4 if you play c4 
we already talked about that you give up the d4 square but you also sort of give up a lot of space on the queen side here you would have to play a6 and now after knight d4 and for example bishop to d7 i go a5 this is a huge position for for white uh, again i don't think the engine says this is winning but if two grandmasters are playing i think it's either a win for white or a draw i don't think black could play for the win the only thing black has is the e4 square but even so i can just take that with the bishop because my bishop is not too good uh, i have a clear weakness i'm targeting and i have a great square so if you ever jump into e4 strategically you are immediately in a good knight versus bad bishop uh, position which you cannot hope to win so after b4 my opponent played b6 i think that is the most reasonable move and now my follow-up wasn't to strengthen uh, black center to give him hanging pawns but c4 breaking the center completely and now there are two options basically you can play uh uh you, well okay uh, one more thing i could have played bc5 as well uh, that should be mentioned uh but i didn't like it okay so bc5 bc5 and c4 to attack the hanging pawn straight away where if dc bishop c again he has two weaknesses i have one i don't think this is enough to claim any sort of advantage therefore i wanted to keep the position as complicated as possible because again my opponent is unrated and i have no idea uh how good he is we've basically only played five or six moves out of theory so i played c4 uh if uh, dc4 in this position uh then queen c4 and if cb4 then knight d4 and black loses uh, that's sort of the trick in this position and if nothing happens i'm just going to trade everything off and black is going to have an extra weakness which is what happened uh, i should say that you don't really want to take here because i just i just win i can just take this uh so after c4 my opponent played rook a to d8 uh, and now here's my small edge bc5 bc5 cd bishop d and rook to c1 immediately putting pressure on the weakness on on, uh, on c5 my opponent played this knight d7 to defend which is a huge mistake knight d7 is a very passive move blocking his rook also keeping his queen a tactical liability also undefending his bishop so now i have knight d4 ideas and that should be a tremendous threat uh, and i saw it immediately i didn't see any purpose to it straight away so i played rook f to d1 uh, and now as you as you saw uh, I, I i just i moved my rook from d1 to c1 to be able to make room for the other one so it was definitely a mistake to play rook a to d1 obviously i i lost the tempo so the bishop is attacked um uh, this is a tough choice uh, which diagonal do you keep the bishop on if you don't keep it on this one your bishop is sort of leaving the defense of your king forever which could be extremely scary uh, if for example bishop to a8 i could claim the diagonal straight away and now we come back to uh, to the weakness of h6 and knight h4 knight f5 this is becoming very scary imagine knight uh, jumping into d6 that should be i think winning for white so my opponent played bishop to e6 now this leads to another issue um, the bishop on e6 is a tactical liability because knight d4 is a move i can play the queen is undefended so i could have played knight d4 straight away but i i couldn't make it work uh, so if knight d4 then of course bishop d5 should be the only move and now knight f5 uh, if uh, black gives up a pawn that should give white a clear edge but i don't think it's enough to win straight away so if knight f6 which probably is the best move then queen c5 but if he tries to hold on to the pawn with bishop to e6 i couldn't find a way to to continue i could play knight d6 that seems nice but then again, what would I do after knight f6? Uh, do I just go back? 
It, the engine in this position plays knight e7 and says white is plus one and a half. I don't see why. Uh, to be honest, the king just moves away and uh, fine. I mean, I could go for queen e4, bishop d3, but doesn't seem enough to win. So in this position, I actually made a mistake because I couldn't uh, make knight d4 work. I played bishop b5. Bishop b5 is a bad move because it doesn't threaten what it appears to be threatening. And the reason is simple, I'm undefending my d1 rook, therefore my back rank is weak. Since the queen is on h2, since the rook is on d8, bishop b5 does nothing. Black can actually play knight to b6. And if I play queen c5, I lose straight away, uh, because rook takes d1. I only have two moves, I can play, oh, three moves, excuse me. Knight e1, bishop f1, or or... Or rook takes d1, all three moves lose. So, for example, if rook d1, uh, then queen takes c5. So bishop b5 doesn't really threaten uh, anything in this position. Even if uh, if black does nothing, let's say here, and I take and rook takes, I still cannot take on c5 because rook d1. So again, bishop b5, clear loss of tempo. In fact, making my bishop worse uh, because my bishop on e2 was defending my rook on d1. But okay, I did play it. My opponent didn't play knight b6. I should also mention that he could play queen to a5, which basically forces me to take on d7. Uh, if I retreat now, I achieved nothing. So let's say takes, and rook takes, and rook takes, and bishop takes, and queen takes, and queen a2 should be a draw, I think. The engine says white is slightly better, but <coughs> knight versus bishop in this position as soon as black establishes uh, an outpost for his bishop with, for example, a6, bishop to b5, I don't think I can avoid a rook end game. Best case, 4 to 3 for me, which should be a draw. But my opponent made a mistake, which I actually was hoping he would, he would make. He defended his pawn with rook c8, and now white should be winning, and uh, it's easy to see why. I go knight d4. The, the problem with rook c8 is that it doesn't really defend the queen, because you lose the exchange, knight d4 still works. So let's look at some options. If cd4, then queen c7. White wins easily. If bishop to d5, then white again wins easily with bishop to d7. And after queen to d7, I simply go knight f5. Uh, there is no defense to rook takes e5 whatever you do you can move your queen you can defend the bishop you can you can do whatever you want but i'm i'm going to play rook e5 and and that's it you can just resign and if you move your king away uh then i'm just going to play e4 and bishop e4 rook d7 bishop c2 rook c2 your piece down so that doesn't work if uh, rook f to d8, for example, then knight e6, f e6, and queen e4. And again, you should lose fairly quickly because of queen e6 or bishop to d3. But my opponent did find the best move to stay in the game. Uh, he played knight f6. And now I have to take on e6. Uh, that was the point. So takes, takes. And again, because of my stupid bishop b5, I cannot win the pawn on c5. Uh, if I take, uh, if I play bishop a6 to take on c5, then simply rook c to d8. And again, if I take, rook takes and and black wins. So I played bishop c4. I, I I'm going to attack the c5 pawn later. For now, I'm putting pressure on e6. Now black has three weaknesses, and even if he manages to defend all of them white should eventually be able to make some progress. On the other hand, there's nothing black can do, nothing active black can do. Okay, so he played rook f8, defending, I played rook to d2. I, I could have played queen to g6 or queen to f5, putting pressure on the pawn straight away, the pawn is pinned to the king, but I wanted to double up my, my rooks first. I want to improve my pieces, infiltrate on d7, prevent any knight d5 uh, ideas, and in the event of the knight moving away from f6, I want to have my rooks doubled so that I can play rook d7. Played king h8, which unpins, prevents queen f5, rook cd1, 
e5. Now e5 is a double-edged move. Uh, gives up some more of the light squares. Uh, now all I have to do is get my stuff in and, and mate him on h7. Uh, it also gives up the d5 square. Uh, but it gets rid of the weakness on e6. I'm never going to win that pawn now. But I'm much happier with with uh, a weak color complex than with a weak pawn. Since I'm playing with queen and bishop versus knight and queen, uh, the knight has to remain on a dark on a dark square to control the light squares. The rooks are pretty useless in this position, and it's much easier for me to keep my pieces active to do both offensive and defensive work because my bishop can remain, for example, on c4, putting pressure on the light squares and defending a2. On the other hand, the knight has to stay on f6, otherwise black gets mated. So e5, I'm going to say not a good move, but gets rid of the weak pawn. Okay, I played queen g6 just getting into the light squares straight away. I was expecting rook to d8, uh, trading off everything, and I actually found a winning idea. I found what I thought was a winning idea. I made a huge mistake. And I'm going to try and explain why. So again, I'm playing an unrated opponent in my mind and statistically I have to win. Also, I'm playing board one for my team in a team competition. I have to win. Okay, so he does trade all the rooks. Now, I don't have a good alternative to taking. So takes, 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 takes. Okay. And my idea was queen f7. So, let me try and explain the reasoning behind queen f7. Uh, queen f7 uh, introduces the threat of bishop e6, uh, bishop f5, queen g6, and then g4, h4, g5. Okay, and then all the black pieces are tied down, and eventually I should win. Also, puts pressure on a7, which I could just go for that. There's an issue, though. I should have gone for this, but slightly differently. I thought I was setting up a cunning trap for my opponent to fall into. What I was actually doing is giving him a completely drawn endgame to, uh, to transpose into by trading queens. Just a second, let me shut the window. They're doing some stuff again. My neighbors are doing something every day. Hmm. So, the refutation to queen f7, because I'm not strong enough to assess the endgame, uh, uh, because I'm not strong enough, enough to, uh, to assess complex pawn endgames correctly, yet, uh, play queen g8. Forces a queen trade, and he didn't know what the endgame was like. He told me that when we analyzed after the game. I was sure I was winning, and I'm going to show you why I'm not winning. For me, at least, it wasn't easy to see. A much better move in this position, with the same idea, just not allowing the queen trade, is queen f5. And I'm doing the same thing. I don't know why it didn't occur to me. I think I wanted to attack the a7 pawn as well. And I wanted to trap him. I wanted to get him into the lost pawn endgame and, and win quickly. But queen f5, same idea. Whatever he does, I'm just going to improve. This is a variation. I analyzed and I couldn't find anything for, for him to do to defend. So he just keeps repeating moves because I, I don't see an improvement. Eventually I do this, get into the light squares and now I should be winning. The engine says this is plus six, still it's not a resignable position, but black is losing material, black is very close to getting mated, has no squares for his king and so on. But I played queen of seven played queen g8 instantly, uh, and I have to take. Uh, now, this position is actually quite instructive. Uh, I took the knight because I thought the pawn endgame was winning. Uh, the pawn endgame is not winning, therefore that was a mistake, because keeping the pieces on the board would have given me at least some winning chances against, let's say, a grandmaster. That being said, I think the only one playing, the only player playing for the win is Black, because even though his pawn structure is worse, even though there are pawns in the center and on both sides of the board, all of Black's pawns are on dark squares. So my bishop is very mobile, but it has no targets. On the other hand, the Black Knight has no good outposts, 
But if you imagine the black king getting into the position, I think I'd prefer to be black. I don't think white can win. The engine says it's plus 0.5, so it should be a draw. In any case, uh, I took. And here's why I thought I was winning. So w when you try to figure out whether opponent game is winning or not, what you have to do is you have to uh, visualize a position which is inevitably going to happen and then go on from there uh, trying to find winning ideas. For me, that seemed simple and I I analyzed this position before I took the rook on d8. It's not that hard to visualize. So both kings are going to come into the center. My king is going to be on d3, his king is going to be on d6. That much is simple. King f1, king f7, king e2, uh, king for example e6, uh, wait just a second, king f1, king f7, king e2, yeah okay, king e6, king d3, king d6 and okay. Or king d5, excuse me, king d5 and then I play e4. Uh, so here's where the kings are going to be when I play e4. He's going to have to go back, my king is going to be on c4. So eventually there's going to be a position with my king on c4, his king on d6, my pawn on e4. How do I win this position? I play g3, f4, create a passed pawn and win. Because his king isn't going to be able to prevent my f pawn or e pawn from queening, while at the same time defending c5 and a7. That was my reasoning. Some of that happened. Uh, the other part did too, but he shouldn't have allowed it. So in fact, I managed to win exactly how I planned it. In five minutes, it seemed very simple. I just thought I was winning straight away, and I just won. Okay, here's how he could have drawn the position. So king f1, f7, king two, blah, 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 e4 check, king d6, king c4. Okay, he plays g6, doesn't really matter what he does here in my mind. Uh, I played a4, I wanted to gain some space on the queen side. He plays king c6, I played g3, continuing with my plan. And here he played a6 and lost the game. There are in fact two drawing moves. Uh, the simplest one is g5, and th this is an easy draw. Uh, it's a very easy draw. I just cannot play f4. That's it. I mean, if I manage to chase his king away, then maybe I can win, and that's what I thought. I thought he's going to be in Zugzwang. I, I just continue. I don't. I have more moves. Okay, for example. I go g4 here, uh, he only has one move I think, and that's a6 or a5, I don't know. If he plays a6, I go here and it's a clean draw, I don't, I, I, there's nothing I can do, he just goes back and forth. Uh, so I completely misassessed the position. I, I thought I, I could win this. There's no way to win this. So g5 just prevents my only active plan. The other drawing move was actually king to d6, and this is complicated. This draws because the king controls the e5 square. So even though it doesn't prevent f4 by force, it prevents an advance. So after f4, uh, that has to be taken. Uh, I should mention that, because if it's not taken, I have a clear passed pawn on f5. So e4, uh, gf4. And now g5, the key move, fg5, hg5. And for white to make, to be able to make any progress, white has to play king b5. Now imagine this same position with the pawn on e5, where the black king is sort of restricted. That's what could have happened in the game. So after g3, my opponent played a6, which has nothing to do with the position doesn't change the nature of the position at all. The difference is that the king is on c6 instead of on d6. With the king on d6, as we said, black is controlling e5. Look at the same variation now. f4, but he did not take. Let's say he took. So takes, takes. Again, g5, fg5, ag5. The difference is that I play e5 now. And now white is easily winning. 
Uh, obviously, if the king moves away, I just queen and pick up all the pawns. Uh, I can use this one as a decoy and just pick up this one and this one and win. Uh, the, this we don't have to analyze. But yeah, with the king on d6, that would have been a draw. Uh, in the game, my opponent played king to d6. It doesn't matter what he does, really. I just have to improve my position slightly. I played a5. He played h5, and I played h4, and this is now complete Zugzwang. Uh, the g-pawn cannot move. The king mustn't move, because if king c6, e5. Uh, if e4, which he did end up playing, then it's... I just push my pawn. So e4, g4. He played g5, trying to trick me. If hg5, then... I actually lose, but fg5 and... and simple win so i think i played a good game uh, out of uh, a very simple opening position i managed to create complications with this pawn advance on the queen side i managed to create some weaknesses now if you turn on the engine the engine says it's all zeros but black has two weak pawns white has one and it's therefore more likely for black to make a mistake which did end up happening. And then when I should have converted the position, uh, I, I misassessed the pawn end game. A stronger player would have punished me and 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 draw, drawn the game. But luckily for me, he wasn't strong enough to see it. He made the same mistake I did. Okay, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you got something from the video. Again, if you are trying to annoy London system players, choose this variation. It's extremely hard to play against. Especially if you're almost equal strength, uh, it's very hard to outplay someone your strength in that variation. Thanks, uh, stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.